At the start of creation, there were two brothers, Sin and Innocence, much like Cain and Abel. Eventually, Sin was burned alive for beating his brother with a fish. After rising from the ashes, Sin forced the people of Ray Class to turn on one another. Innocence realized the town was lost and burned it to the ground, pledging to return whenever the ashes of Sin fell. The land was next ruled by a mythological entity known as the Beast, who lived in the mountain. The oldest race in Ray Class were the Val, the last queen being at Ziri. In an effort to retain eternal youth, she had the life force drained out of the men of the Val by her thaumaturgist or magician, Doriani. It was during this time that virtue gems were created. After the Val civilization fell from internal conflict, Tarkus Veruso led the Esmiri tribesmen into what remained of the Val civilization and founded the city of Sarn on top of the Val capital. This is also why the end of Act 2 takes you directly from the Val pyramid into the city outskirts of Sarn. When a dark being killed Veruso's heir, Caspiro, General Alano Frisia fought back against the unknown darkness and was crowned emperor since no heir was present. The Frisia family held power for a long time through inbreeding. The last Frisia was named Azaro. Unable to produce an heir himself, he created the Labyrinth and declared that the first to complete the Labyrinth be named Next Emperor. A wealthy family by the name Parandus saw this as an opportunity to seize power. Chitus Parandus was the first to complete the Labyrinth trial, but only through the help of his wealthy uncle Kadiro Parandus, the same guy we sometimes encounter in past leagues who trades us items for Parandus coins. Apparently they bought their way through uh, map layouts, advantages, and so on. Upon the throne, though, Chitus immediately imprisoned Azaro into the Labyrinth for eternity, which is why we ascend in lab to this day. Remember, this race was the Azmiri, but over generations they captured slaves of the Karui, Izamites, and Meraketh. Sound familiar? They play into the Legion mechanics. Chitus worked with a thaumaturgist, Malachi. A girl named Diala had a good relationship at first with Chitus, but over time annoyed him, so the Emperor gave her to Malachi to experiment on. She ultimately fell in love with Malachi, and he reshaped her into the Gemling Queen. Eventually, an uprising was held by Vol, and ultimately Chitus Prandus was murdered by the mayor of Sarn, Ondar, which was basically a double KO. The High Templar under Vol is currently Act 3's Dominus until we take him out. Who was High Templar before Dominus? Venerius, the Templar we fight in the Cortex map. Vol hated everything thaumaturgical or magical, and had many well-known names killed because of this, including Malagaros, Chevron, and Doidri. He also wanted a creature destroyed. Remember the name I mentioned early on, the beast that lived in the mountain? He sent Malachi into the belly of the beast. Act 4 makes sense now? After betrayal, Diala works with us to use the rapture device to enter the area after we kill Vol. Venerius had a servant named Valdo Caesarius. Valdo was put into charge of restoring an old broken down device, later called the map device, which allows traveling into a new dreamlike realm. This dream world is later discussed at length by Kavas, who was later revealed as simulacrum of Venerius during the Synthesis League. This map device, of course, originally was created by Malagaro, but Valdo tinkered with the old device only to suddenly fall into a dream state and interact with this darkness, this creature known as the Elder, who had been trapped so long ago. Valdo was taught the powers of creation by the Elder and acted as his apprentice within the map device, and he learned of the incredible power. The Elder was trapped, it turned out. Elder asked for the sword trapping him, which was later known as Starforge, to be removed from his body and finally set him free. But Valdo felt a wave of dread, fear, doubt, and horror as he reached to the blade and hesitated, began asking more questions of the Elder. This led the Elder to fall into a rage at Valdo's hesitancy and began threatening him and his young daughter. Seeing the Elder's true nature, Valdo pledged to never speak of him again nor return to the dreamlike world. Valdo began working on an alternate map device for fear of encountering the Elder again, but the lack of progress on repairing the original device, the task he was given so many months earlier, enraged his master Venerius, who publicly punished Valdo in the streets, having him caned to near death. Valdo in this moment confessed everything to Venerius, but Venerius loved the idea of the incredible power Valdo spoke of while in the map device. Valdo hoped he would help lead the destruction of the Elder, but Venerius was interested in freeing him instead. Venerius snatched up Valdo's young daughter and held her at knife point, forcing Valdo to take him to the Elder. Venerius then freed the Elder, and an enormous tempest of energy was released. Venerius was believed dead, but of course we now know he did survive. Valdo snatched up Zana and the Star Forge and ran. He got Zana out, but stayed in the map device, knowing that his training with the Elder and his knowledge of shaping within the dream world would help him stand a chance against him. Ultimately, this slowly drove him to madness to become the shaper we later know. Only when defeated does he help us in the Elder fight. Venerius is thus the person who freed the Elder, which was also known as the Darkness and the Shade in lore. Was this the same Darkness who killed Caspiro and was driven back by Alano Frisia, Azaro's ancestor? Very likely. 